<sighs> well, here we are again. Hello friends, how's it going? Uh, happy Mother's Day. So, here's a question for you. When you think of mom, what's the first thing you think of? That's right, Wiimotes. Here's a Wii Remote, and besides being an eternal symbol... It's called a Wiimote. A Wii Remote. Wiimote. Wii Remote. No, Wiimote. This is a Wii Remote, and besides being a symbol of maternal love, the Wii Remote is also a great way to get acceleration data into your computer. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take the Wii Remote, pair it with your machine, get that data into Max, and do something extremely cool with it. Seamless transition. The first step is to actually get sound from, no, get accelerometer data from your Wii Remote into your computer. Uh, to do that, there's basically two paths that you can go down. You can use the Aka.Wii Remote objects, um, or you can use Oscillator. Um, the Aka.Wii Remote objects have the advantage of being objects that are in Max, um, and the disadvantage of not working. Um, so we're going to use Oscillator. Open up Oscillator. This is what Oscillator looks like. Um, you click here to open the Wiimote drawer and then push buttons 1 and 2 on your Wiimote and push Start Discovery and you should, you should be all paired up and if you shake it these little yellow lights should light up um, and really go ahead and pat yourself on the back because uh, you've already accomplished something. Oscillator is going to handle pairing your Wiimote with your computer. The next step is to get the Wiimote data from Oscillator into Max. To do that, uh, first of all, click here to turn on raw Excels. Uh, you don't want pitch roll yaw, uh, you want XYZ for this. And come over here and turn down the smoothing on the accelerometer. We can do that in Max if we want to, so there's no reason to do it here. Um, next, Click here on event type and go down to OSC routing. That's going to route OSC or open sound control packets from. Is this annoying to you, Stefan? Is that why you're turning on music? Because my voice is not melodious and smooth. I'm trying to music. Stefan's trying to concentrate on real things. Um, Stefan makes pornography. Makes what? So the next thing you want to do is click here on value and click new. Um, so click here on this little <laughs> here. Where? Um, click localhost 9000 max MSP or pure data. Um, and that should be all you need to do. Everything should be good here. Open up max, make a new window. Uh, oops, open up max, make a new patcher. And if you make a, let's make this big and zoom in so you guys can see it. Okay, so uh, make a UDP receive object. Give it the argument 9000 because that's the port we're listening on. And if you throw a message object underneath that, now we can see our Wiimote acceleration object uh, packets coming in. So that's cool. And now this X, Y, and Z tilt this thing, different numbers come in here. So what we want now, we want to be able to go like this and hear a drum sound. Um, so this be, what we're going to do is look for a feature in that acceleration that we can map to drum sounds um, reliably. I'm going to come back over to uh, Oscillator, click on Z acceleration here and push quick look. And now we're looking here at the acceleration in the z-axis. This is the z-axis up and down like this. So if I go like this, you'll see these big spikes. Um, and that spike is actually coming not over this part of the gesture, but when I stop at the bottom and snap the remote to being still very quickly, there's a big spike. Um, and what we're going to measure in max is the difference between uh, one acceleration value and the next acceleration value. When that passes a certain threshold, we'll know that that's the time to trigger a drum sound. So back in Max, uh, UDP receive root slash we slash one slash I forget what was it slash we slash one slash Excel slash X Y Z to pull out those we packets and then. Unpack, float, float, float. And then, um, so to measure the difference between two values, we're going to use a trigger and a subtraction object. And so what this is going to do is first send um, the float value to this object to trigger the float, uh, subtract from the previous value, and then set the previous value to be the current value. Does that make sense? So, first value comes through here, gets subtracted from the previous, goes out and does its thing, then the current value gets set to the previous value. Um, 
We want to detect, say, when that's greater than 0 0.2. I'm not sure about the exact value, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um, and then we'll use a tog edge object. Tog edge detects a logical transition from uh, 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. So uh, whenever this value goes above 0 0.2, we're going to get a bang out of this inlet, uh, outlet. So let's test that. Make this nice big bang, and then... Huh? Huh? Okay, so, um, to get sound out of Max, I uh, have some MIDI stuff loaded up here in Ableton. Um, so I'm just going to make a MIDI out, no, 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 a note out, note out, <laughs> note out, there we go. Double click it, set it to from Max MSP1, make a make note, make note, 127, 100, um, Hook that up to my note out, and then I have to know that my kick is on MIDI note 36, so I'm just going to map this to my kick. And now I should be able to make a kick sound. Done, we're musicians. No, I'm just kidding. So that's uh, one kick, that's the kick sound. Um, so now I want to map this sound and this sound to drum sounds too. Uh, that's just X acceleration, so we can move this guy over. Uh, let's make some space for ourselves here. Just duplicate this. I'm going to pull this up here because MIDI note 36, so I want to map to that sound. And then MIDI note 37, I'm going to map to ah, 37. And here's 38. Send this to make out. Huh, make note, not make out. Um, X value. Wow, X value. And then when this is um, uh, so in one direction we're measuring when something's greater than 0 0.2. In the other direction, we're measuring when it's less than negative 0.2. Uh, hopefully that made sense, because we're measuring positive changes in one direction and negative changes in the other, because that's a positive acceleration and that's a negative acceleration. So here we're going to make this less than negative 0.2. And now we've got all three directions. Um, done. that. So what happened there is I came down like this. I accidentally triggered more than one sound because I came down and stopped it like this, but there was some side-to-side -side motion and that triggered one of the other drum sounds. So to fix that, we want to make it so that when we play one drum sound, it stops the other drum sounds from being played. Um, I'm going to grab these, move them up. What I want is for a note that gets triggered in um, any one direction to make it so that the other directions don't get triggered for a certain amount of time. Um, so to do that, I'm going to move all these down, make a gate that's open by default, um, and then uh, I want this whole functional piece to have two inlets. One is the note I want to play, and the other is notes from other directions that are going to stop that note from being played. So I've got a gate here that's open by default, and I'm going to make a trigger bang zero here. What I want is for first notes from other two directions to close off this gate, and then with a delay, I'm going to set to 100 milliseconds for now, to open the gate. So here's what that looks like. Bang, zero to close the gate, and then a delay 100, and a one to open the gate. Line these up, line this up. Cool. The nice thing about delay is that when you bang delay, if you bang it again before the delay's up, it resets the delay. That means that if I bang it twice quickly, it's going to count the delay from the second bang and not from the beginning of the delay, not from the first bang. So that's it, we're done with that thing. Uh, so for example, I can connect these two to here. Um, I'm going to connect this one to here. So what I'm going to do is take this whole block here, um, connect this to here, this to here and this to here, say, and then encapsulate it. 
and call it gate. That's not a good idea. Call it monsoon. Um, make three of them, one for each note. This guy to this guy. This is for the note that I want to pass through. And now each one of these, if I play a note, um, I want it to delay the other two, to, to shut off the other two. So this is going to be like this, and these connect to here. And now when I come down with that gesture, I shouldn't accidentally trigger the other notes. probably a pretty good idea to put on some Daft Punk and pretend like you can make sounds along with Daft Punk. It's very, there's a critical moment for me when I'm making any patch where it becomes very, very important to pretend I'm as cool as Daft Punk.